Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah, coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, you have all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai, a prayer to the Most High, blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge, understanding of the events of the past, in order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth. So may get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. The Most High has been moving me to review some of my other studies from some of the other hidden books in order to make the connections between what was going on in the, the Southern Kingdom's records and the Northern Kingdom's records. Most High put it on me to go back into my book of um, Second Baruch. And uh, with the uh, enlightenment and the knowledge of the uh, second stick, it makes many of the scriptures now say so much more than we thought they were saying before. So I'm just going to read real quick two really small or short chapters um, from Second Baruch, chapters uh, 70 and 71, just so you can kind of get a little taste of... Uh, how much more, how much deeper these uh, scriptures really are. We understand that back then we were totally aware of the tw whole, all 12 tribes and, no, and understanding the fact that there's going to be records from prophets from the northern kingdom as well as the southern kingdom. We knew that we were going to get the um, two sticks back together. And then once those two sticks come back together, what that meant for the rest of the world. And as we uh, get more understanding, we realize how Psalms 83, how deep that is, how confederate all the groups have been to keep us uh, from our knowledge of understanding of who we were, what we used to do, where we used to do these things, where were the lands the Most High gave us, where are the lands the Most High gave the other nations. So it's gonna be a quick lesson and as you uh, read with me and take a look, you'll see how these connections are so much more in depth than we ever knew before. When we used to read a lot of these uh, books, we used to always try to make it relate back only to the Bible before the Most High gave us a second stick. Now that we have the Book of Moore and the Bible together, along with all these other writings, it just makes everything so much more enriching. We're going to read from the Sefer, and we're going to read 2 Baruch, chapter 70. Hear, therefore, the interpretation of the last black waters, which are to come after the black. This is the word. Behold, the days come, and it shall be when the time of the age has ripened, and the harvest of its evil and good seeds has come. So this is very important, understanding about the time of reaping, okay, and the, reaping the harvest of the evil and the good seeds, the wheat and the tares. This is going to go even more in depth with that, okay? And the harvest of its evil and good seeds has come, that El Elohim will bring upon the earth and its inhabitants and upon its rulers perturbation of the Ruach and stupor of heart. I had to look up that word perturbation. Perturbation. Let me check it real quick here. I took a picture. Oh, actually, I was going to put the pictures up, but you guys can look it up. Because <clears throat> it's talking about these, the spirit of these other nations right now. Uh, state of being perturbed. A disturbance of motion, course, arrangement, or state of equilibrium. So it's a, a disturbance of equilibrium. And you go, especially a disturbance of the regular and usually elliptical course of motion of a celestial body that is produced by some force additional to that which causes its irregular motion. But what I want you guys to listen to are some of the synonyms, okay? Agitation, anxiety, anxiousness, apprehension, concern, disquiet, nervousness, fear. So what you're seeing is right now with this awakening, it says when the El Elohim or the Most High will bring upon the earth and its inhabitants 
and upon its rulers, nervousness or fear of, uh, of the spirit and the stupor of heart. When the Most High awakens us, just like it talks about in Revelation 11, when the other nations see us standing back up on our feet, when you see these two sticks coming back together, it is going to bring nervousness to the inhabitants and, the, and to the rulers. It's going to bring fear. It's going to bring uneasiness, worry, concern. And that's what you're seeing now because of the fact that the Most High has given us back the two sticks and given us back understanding how now we can de easily see through their lies. Those are the feelings that they are having now. They have fear. They have a lot of concern. You can tell just by how society is right now. You know, there's a lot of nervousness, a lot of anxiety. And that's all based upon the awakening of the Most High's chosen seed. We understand that our people are the time clock. And when our, through our awakening, the time clock is now pretty much about to strike zero. And then there's going to be a huge change over the earth. So again, the Most High will bring upon the earth and its inhabitants and upon its rulers perturbation of the Ruach or the spirit and stupor of heart. And they shall hate one another and provoke one another to fight. And that's what's coming upon the other nations right now. They are hating each other. And they are provoking each other to fight. When you're seeing people shooting missiles and shooting each other's, uh, you know, assassinating each other's people, assassinating generals, killing, pe killing each other. That's all part of what's supposed to come on the earth right now. And let's continue. And the mean, this is this is, shows the state of our world right now. And the mean shall rule over the honorable. That's exactly what you have. You have a group of people who show, you know, no remorse for their actions, have been destroying our people for hundreds of years, and they just justify it, and they just ignore all the things that they've done to our people. So you got the mean shall rule over the honorable, and those of low degree shall be extolled above the famous. And that's what you get. You got people that are being, um, you know, put up, put above everyone over the earth, put above our people. Our people have been the ones that have created everything. Our people were the ones who invented everything, but they've, they've of course taken it and given, you know, credit to everyone else and kept our people at the bottom. They've given, you know, all the other nations a leg up in the society. They've given them all of the uh, opportunities, you know, they've given them the leg up on everything, you know, money for you know, opportunities to make money, housing, buying land, um, pretty much jobs, everything. They've put in much given themselves the leg up and left our people at the bottom. They've given themselves the advantage and then they've been enjoying their blessings all the while ignoring us while we have been going through our cursing. Okay. And uh, let's go to four. And the many shall be delivered into the hands of the few. And that's also what's going to happen in the near future. But that happened to us. You know, we were many and we were given into the hands of the few. You know, we were given to the hands of the elite. We're given to the ones that have made a covenant with Satan. But again, that, that's going to happen in the future as well. Because this world is made for many. So like it says in Ezra, but the world to come is made for few. So that's going to happen again. Where the many will shall be given to the hands of the few. And those who were nothing shall rule over the strong. And that's what's happening right now. You know, the Gentiles, if you look at Second Ezra 6, talks about how the Gentiles are like, are as nothing. They're as spittle to the Most High. But the Most High brought us down to a low state and gave us to these people who were looked at as nothing by the Most High. Okay. Let's see here. And the poor shall have abundance beyond the rich. And that's what's going to happen also in the future. We're poor right now, but we will have abundance in the near future. Above those people now who are, who are now held up as being rich. And the impious 
shall exalt themselves above the heroic. Our people were heroic. Our people were the ones who came in and took down the land of Canaan and took down the giants. And they were looked at as heroic. But then we were demeaned, we were brought down from being the head to the tail. Now check this part out, number five. And the wise shall be silent, and the foolish shall speak. That's exactly what you're seeing now. At you know, earlier we were the wise because we were following the most high and he had given us all the knowledge, understanding that we needed. He had given the knowledge, understanding to our um, ancestors and they handed down that information to our posterity. And the world is showing you now through all the things that um, all these buildings that were built that were set up to the stars and to the constellations and to the equinoxes, but that was information that was given to our people. Those were markers. Those were signs of our people and the knowledge that the Most High had given us. And you're starting to see all these, um, you know, all these buildings and these pyramids and all these structures. And they had no idea how they were made back then. But we understand now that the Most High had given us all the ability to make all these structures through the information, through the know-how, and through the power to be able to do these kinds of things. But then when we lost our identity, the structures remained in order for us, when we were time for us to awake, or to awaken here at the end, for us to be able to find our way back to the Father, find our way back to have our original status. Let's continue. Let's see, but right now we have, well, we have the foolish are speaking now. The foolish have been speaking for the last 400 years. Just like the last video I had done earlier where they admitted to the fact that the Mayas, who were the Israelites, were far advanced, more advanced than the Greeks and the Romans, but they had to put something in there as what they couldn't figure. They had wheel, they had wheels on toys, but they couldn't figure out to make bigger wheels so that they could make their lives easier. See, that's what happens when the foolish speak. When the foolish speak, they're talking about how the Holy Land is over there in the so-called Middle East, but the time of Jericho, there's no, there's no proof that the um, events of Jericho happened over there. So instead of actually looking for the real place where Jericho uh, had taken place and the walls of Jericho had fallen, they say that the book of uh, the book of Joshua never happened. So this is what happens when the foolish are the ones speaking and the wise are silent. Now all the lies that they've been setting up, how they've been saying that we're African American, colored, Negro, all the bywords. That's what these are all the things that happen when the um, foolish are speaking. And the wise are quiet. Things like the Pope is the only person who can interpret the Bible. Or when Protestants say that every individual can take our records and they can interpret them. This is what happens when the foolish speak and the wise are silent. You get Cesare Borgia. You get a whole different type of gospel. You get white Jesus. When the foolish are speaking and the wise are quiet. But now the Most High is switching that information. He's switching that status. You know, we still have the, you know, the Book of Moore was written by the white man. Even, all the while, while the, you know, the, the same white people who uh, it translated the Book of Moore were the ones who translated your Bible. But this is what happens when the foolish are speaking and the wise are silent. But now the Most High is raising up the wise once again. To bring the truth and many people are now realizing that they have been lied to and now many people are on a quest to find the truth and the most high is going to lead them to the ones that he has raised up to bring the truth let's continue uh, let's see neither shall the thought of men be then confirmed nor the counsel of the mighty nor shall the hope of those who hope be confirmed. Six is very six is very important. And when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon men. This is exactly what's happening right now. Let's read that again. And when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. 
when the Book of Moore is released, that's there right there lets you know that the Most High is already moving to restore his people. That was predicted when the Book of Moore was released back to the nation, that that was going to be the marker to let you know that the Most High has already been moving to restore his covenant. That fits that perfectly. When you start looking at the Book of Moore and how it's opened up the knowledge and understanding of where our homeland is, and it starts to be the gateway to all this other information, that's showing you how prophecy is being fulfilled. How now we have the two sticks, the, you know, the Southern Kingdom's records and the Northern Kingdom's records all now coming back together. That all fits that right there. When our downfall was predicted in Nephi, and he's going to bring the Gentiles over here to possess us in our own land. That was all part of prophecy. When it talks about us being um, dead in the streets for three and a half days and the other nations living life, living it up on our resources, enjoying all of our inventions, enjoying all of our um, resources, all the while hiding our identity and ignoring our plight. That is right there, a fulfillment of uh, verse six right there. Let's read that one more time. And when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. Are not, now that we've been awakened, have we not seen now how the whole world is confused? How the whole world is like Babel or Babylon. There's confusion everywhere. People are still going to these churches, even though these churches have no light in them. These people are going to priests who have no authority over the scriptures. They're going to pastors who have no authority over the scriptures. They ignore who the true Hebrews are. They make videos bringing about all this knowledge, but they ignore who the true Hebrews are. That's that confusion that shall fall upon all men. When they're ignoring who the true people are and the true time clock of prophecy. And then they're quick to um, just pretty much you know, ignore all of our plight and all of our suffering. But now the Most High is raising us up and our people are standing up, which is now bringing more confusion because all the things that they've been taught, they're now realizing all those things are a lie. So what it says, and when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. You see how when you try to bring out the truth, they get that glazed look in their eyes because those spirits will not allow them to see the truth. The scales are still on their eyes and they can't um, accept the truth. That's that confusion shall fall upon all men. And some of them shall fall in battle. This is what's going to happen in the near future. Talk about the fall of these people and how the, the different ways the Most High will um, take recompense on these individuals. And some of them shall perish in anguish, and some of them shall be destroyed by their own. Then the Most High will reveal those peoples whom he has prepared before. See, the Most High is, is revealing the people he has prepared before. It's like I talked about how you've been called before the foundation of the world. The Most High is now revealing the people that he has called before the foundations of the world. You see how now when you add the first, you know, the first stick and the second stick together, all this information is now coming with much more clarity. Okay. Again, then the Most High will reveal those peoples whom he has prepared before. And they shall come and make war with the leaders that shall then be left. Okay. Now talking about the, um, him raising up the people that he has uh, assigned to these certain positions, these certain jobs and given these certain tasks. It was, and it shall come to pass that whosoever gets safe out of the war shall die in the earthquake. And whosoever gets safe out of the earthquake shall be burned by the fire. And whosoever gets safe out of the fire shall be destroyed by famine. And it shall come to pass that whosoever 
of the victors and the vanquished gets safe out of and escapes all these things aforesaid will be delivered into the hands of my servant Hamashiach, for all the earth shall devour its inhabitants. Okay, hold on. Seventy one is um, also something very important, something we need to touch on real quick. Because if you haven't noticed, you've seen how uh, there's been a few stars that have all of a sudden been given citizenship to some of these countries over in on the continent of Africa. They're trying to push another land on you so that you will leave this land and not have the protection that the Most High promised you will have and the land that he's already prepared for you. Take a look at 71. And the Holy Land shall have mercy on its own, and it shall protect its inhabitants at that time. This is the vision which you have seen, and this is the interpretation. For I have come to tell you these things, because your prayer has been heard with El Elyon, or the Most High. So let's read that again. And the Holy Land shall have mercy on its own, and it shall protect its inhabitants at that time. The um, homeland, our holy land, is going to protect us. That's what's been talked about in the future. Just like it talks about how that also in Revelation 12, how the uh, land here will protect the woman. That's what's going on right now. And that's why you see this big push to try to get our people to leave our homeland and claim someone else's land as our own. We've been using, we've used this map and we've talked about all the different, you know, the ones, the giants that they found, the ones they found that they've admitted to, but we know that they don't tell the truth about anything. So I'm sure there's way more than even what we're seeing right here. But this was that whole big part of the uh, bringing together you know, and well, this part right here of 670 and 6, and when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. The bringing together of these two books and the knowledge and understanding has brought confusion not only to the Gentiles, but has also brought conf confusion even into the Hebrew awakening. As you can see, many um, people have a very difficult time bringing the two sticks together and accepting that the Most High is uh, omnipro omnipotent and omnipresent and can do whatever he wants. He's not uh, beholden to how we want things fulfilled. He fulfills prophecy the way he wants to. And I think that the way he's done it by splitting up these two books, splitting up the Northern and Southern Kingdom, and then bringing them back together on his own, at his, at his leisure, has proven that he is the Most High and that he is the ultimate power and his will shall be done. If you take a look here, you see what's going on right now. As you get past, if you look at 11, actually, let's look at 10, Revelation 11 and 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Our people definitely tormented them before because we let them know that we are the most highest children. And that we pretty, and it's like I talked about the wisdom of Solomon chapter two, how we were just, um, you know, I, every time they looked at us it let them know that they weren't the most high's children and that they weren't living the way the most high wanted them to. We were the example that was supposed to be set in order to show the rest of the world how to please the most high. Look at 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That goes hand in hand with that second Baruch 70 and 6. Let me read that one again. And when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. What was predicted? It was predicted of our fall. It was predicted that we were going to be given to the other nations. But it was also predicted that we were going to be given the spirit again. And in the land of our captivities, we were going to awaken. That awakening is happening. 
that Awakening now consists of the two sticks being brought back together, the Northern Kingdom's records and the Southern Kingdom's records. And when that happens, what does it say? Great fear fell upon them, which saw them right here. And also what happens over here in Second Baruch, it says, um, and when those things which were predicted have come to pass, then shall confusion fall upon all men. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now. So since the world understands that the land, the Holy Land is going to fight for us, is going to protect us as well, they're now pushing this. Jay-Z and Beyonce, Cardi B, rapper and actor Ludacris is officially African. Most deaf, now Ludacris and the family, you know, they get uh, gets Gabon uh, citizenship. His wife, mom, and three children were also given citizenship of Central African oil-rich nation. Where was this set before? Where was this uh, concern for our plight before? Where was this trying to give us a, pl a place to a uh, refuge for the last 400, 500 years? They haven't cared about us then. So why all of a sudden a big push to give us citizenship now? That just confirms the times that we're in. That just confirms that the scriptures, how it talks about how on 71, Second Book 71, it says, And the Holy Land shall have mercy on its own, and it shall protect its inhabitants at that time. They know this. So they're trying their best to get as many of our people out of the land as possible. Because they know that once everything, once the, uh, once everything goes down, that the Most High is going to protect his people in his land. Just like it talks about in Joel chapter 2. So the actions of the other nations are confirming what's already been written in, our, in the scriptures. All of a sudden, it's a big push and they're using um, famous people to try to influence the weak-minded. They're all, look at them. They must know something. We're going to go over there. We're going to get our citizenship, but also we're going to go over there too. And I'm sure they're going to make it easy for people to go ahead and run. That's why you see all these people showing everything about America burning and how the Americas are going to burn because they all playing into the same thing because they're playing to try to get you off out of your own land and into someone else's. So I'll, most I moved me to this, and I'm sure there's a whole lot more he's going to continue to uh, open up to me to bring to you. I hope that will help to uh, explain what's going on right now with uh, prophecy and how it's being fulfilled daily at a rapid clip. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.